assalamu alaikum guys i hope you are doing well and in this video we are going over the pci dss or known as the payment card industry data security standards so we'll go an overview we'll try to understand what this standard framework is all about so let's understand this pci dss So it's all about the card data. So it's all about those companies that either accept card data or they process the card data or whether they are storing it or transmitting it, the credit card information. So that this standard is designed to ensure that this process takes place in a secure environment. So what's the importance of PCI DSS? So it protects cardholder data from breaches and frauds. It ensures compliance with regulatory requirements. It also builds trust with customers and stakeholders. So what's the brief history of PCI DSS? So this standard was introduced in 2004 by major credit card companies like Visa, Mastercard, American Express, Discover and JCB. So before 2024 uh, before 2004 every uh, these companies credit card companies have their own specific standards still today they have their own internal standard but they all group together and form this international uh, global standards that they should adhere to uh, the merchants should adhere to these standards so let's understand some of the key terms that are used in the pci dss standard so first one is the cardholder data so information such as credit card numbers cardholder name expiration date and service code so what is a cardholder data so cardholder data is your credit card numbers your name cardholder's name the expiration date and the service codes so next is the census sensitive authentication data commonly known as sad so basically this includes your full track data which is there in the magnetic strip data or which also equivalent on a chip in modern days credit card so this is your card verification codes uh it also includes your pin so these all comes under the sensitive authentication data then you have a merchant. So who is a merchant? So merchant is a business entity that accept payment cards. So for example, if you go to Smart Bazaar or any um, outlet that accept this credit card, um, so they are known as merchant. So any business entity that accept payment card data, they are termed as merchant. So who is an acquirer? So acquirer is a bank or entity that process payment card transaction on behalf of the merchant so that is a bank on behalf of the merchant who is basically processing this trans card transaction is known as the acquirer and finally we have the term called issuer so the bank or that organization that issued the payment card to the card holder is known as the issuer so you if you have a credit card of any bank for example let's say sdfc so in this case uh sdfc is the issuer so these were the some of the key terms that are used in the pci dss let's move on so what is the goal of pci dss so the goal of pci dss is to build and maintain secure networks implement strong security measures to protect cardholder data it is to protect cardholder data and show that cardholder data is protected both at rest as well as in transit to maintain a vulnerability management program so by the way these are all the uh, known as the 12 uh, um, requirements of pci dss so it helps to help it is to maintain a vulnerability management program it is to implement strong access control measures to restrict access to cardholder data only to those individuals who need to know then regularly monitor and test networks continuously monitor network activities and test security system to identify and address vulnerabilities 
maintain an information security policy, develop and maintain a policy that addresses information security for all personals. So it is to have a secure network, protect the cardholder data, have a vulnerability management program, implement strong access control measures and regularly test networks and monitor and then having a information security policy so those are the six high level goals of pci dss and then we will dive into the specific of the two other requirements of the pci dss so number one is to install and maintain a firewall configuration to protect cardinal data so firewall controls your inbound and outbound network traffic based on security rules the second one is do not use vendor supply default for system password and other security parameters. So default passwords and setting are easily exploited by attackers. So they should not be used. Number third is to protect card stored cardholder data. So using encryption, truncation, masking and hashing. These are the techniques to protect stored data. Then you have the encrypt transmission of cardholder data across open and public networks so using a strong cryptography and security protocols such as ssl tls to protect the cardholder data when in transit and the fifth one is to protect all systems again malware and regularly update malware protection so install and maintain antivirus software and ensure it is regularly updated and then you have to develop and maintain secure systems and applications so apply security patches and follow secure coding practices then you have to restrict access to cardholder data by business need to know so limited access to cardholder data to only those who need to perform the job then you have identify and authenticate access to system components so assign a unique id to each person with computer access and use mfa multi-factor authentication restrict physical access to cardholder data implement a physical security control or measures to protect the cardholder data then track and monitor all access to network resources and cardholder data and so you need to implement a logging and monitoring to detect and respond to security incidents then you have to regularly test security systems and process to perform vulnerability scans and penetration tests to identify and address security weakness and finally having a policy that address information security for all personnel so develop implement and maintain a security policy that addresses employee roles and responsibilities so there are different levels of PCI DSS compliance and it typically depends on the number of transactions. So based on that, this compliance level could be categorized into four categories. So level one is when you have over more than 6 million transactions annually. So it requires an annual on-site assessment by a QSA and a quarterly network scans. If your transactions is somewhere between 1 million to 6 million transaction annually so you will be in level 2 and it requires an annual self-assessment questionnaire and quarterly network scan if you have a transaction of 20,000 to 1 million transaction on an annual basis then you require an annual self-assessment questionnaires and quarterly network scan and you will be in level three and finally if you have less than 20,000 transactions annually then you require just an annual self-assessment questionnaire and quarterly network scan so you will only be requiring qsa or quarterly um, network scans only if you have more than six million transactions if you have less than then uh, you will just require to do a annual self assessment questionnaires and to perform quarterly network scan from the approved security vendors who are approved by the pci council to perform network scan on your network
Next, let's understand what is this self-assessment questionnaire. So the purpose of SAQ or self-assessment questionnaires is to allow merchants to self-assess their compliance with the PCI DSS standards. So there are various types of SAQs. So like, for example, you have SAQ A, SAQ B, C, VT, you have SAQ C, and then um, SAQD and so on. So based on the type of merchants and how they process card data, these there are various SAQs available. So when to use each SAQ? So for example, if um, for example if you have SAQ A, if you are eligible for that, so that means the card there is no card present on the merchant side. It is an e-commerce or mail or telephone order, which is outsourced payment processing. So SAQB is for use for merchants using standalone payment terminals and SAQD is for all service provider and merchant not covered by SAQA through CVT. This was some of the example of SAQ. For more detail, you can uh, get this information from the official PCI DSS website. So you have to perform risk assessment and management if you want to implement the PCI DSS. DSS uh, standards controls in your environment. So the first step would be to conduct risk assessment. So identify potential threats and vulnerabilities that could impact cardholder data. Then you have to identify the risk, assess the likelihood and impact of the identified risk, and then finally mitigate those risks. So by implementing controls to mitigate risk and regularly review their effectiveness. Then you have to implement security controls so for example would be like firewalls or antivirus software encryption access controls and monitoring tools so there are some best practices for implementation so follow a layered security approach regularly update and patch system and conduct regular security training for employees you also have to have an incident response plan so key components of an incident response plan uh, like incident identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lesson learn. You have to take steps to, there are steps to take during a data breach. So for example, immediately contain the breach, notify the relevant parties, investigate the breach, remediate the issue, and communicate with affected individuals. So in conclusion, so what we learn over for the overview of the PCI DSS. So here are the, some of the summary of the key points. So PCI DSS helps protect cardholder data. It builds customer trust and ensure compliance with regulatory requirements. So what is the importance of ongoing compliance? So continuous monitoring, regular audits and employee training are essential for maintaining compliance. And here is a list of references and resources that you can check out. So for PCI Security Council, you can this is a website, PCI Security Standards.org. This is the official website of the PCI Security Standards Council. So all your information with regards to SAQ forms are available. This you can also download the standard for free after registering with your uh, email ID. And you can also check out the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NEST, as well as the ISO and other relevant industry publications and report. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys in another video. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.